The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. H.P. Lovecraft. Author of the stories in which dark corners of the earth are based off. All of Lovecraft's horrors is based around that sentiment. Fear of the unknown. Through explicating grounded worlds with rational protagonists, he dashes that reality with a jagged edge of impossibility. Vague depictions of indescribable monstrosities that originate in planes incomprehensible by the human mind. In all the days of my life. Captain Hurst! And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <sighs> Amen. Through the writings, Lovecraft weaves in a horror that we makes that death seem like the only good it's option, unlocked. that makes you terrified of that as well. But if you live, as many of his protagonists do, your mind is shattered, plagued and tormented from voices and hallucinations that could be real, but to everyone else, is fiction. Dark Corners of the Earth captures this concept very well. The main character is a detective, a hero praised in the papers, and at the very beginning of the game has an interdimensional experience that forces him to go into an asylum for six years. Plagued by amnesia, he can only remember the last six months and goes on this case to a town of Innsmouth. So this character has already lived the life of a Lovecraft protagonist and somehow come out on the other side, but not completely. In moments of extreme duress, brought upon by imminent danger or witnessing moments of the macabre, the protagonist has alterations of sanity, in which case he might hear voices or his visions begin to morph around creating a deception as to what the present world could be representing. This is especially dangerous in moments of combat where you are fighting or killing and your vision begins to go out and you have to guess whether where the true enemy is. This creates an almost catch-22 for his line of work. In order to find the truth, he has to push the limits of his mind, but if he pushes his mind too far, he wouldn't be able to comprehend it if he found it. But the game uses this aspect to an astonishingly detailed effect. You are going out of your mind. Sanity control is a huge aspect of the gameplay, but another is this lurking effect, where you can see the world through imminent threats. Now this adds into expectation of danger, but also aids in aspects of the unknown, and what we eventually learn from the story is that you are truly seeing through their eyes, as in you are out of your mind and in theirs. Finally, to create a climax between these two concepts of seeing through somebody else and the arrest, the finale of the game has you actually going out of your body as well as controlling the monsters in the final area. How are you able to determine yourself from the world around you if neither of them seem plausible or tangible? The game, in the end, pulls the rug out from under our feet. Through the story we progress through the case and uncover unsettling things about our world and how it interacts with other dimensions. We champion strange situations that cripple other men and overcome our mind's stress under situations. While we are fighting the present danger, we are trying to fight back against our flashbacks of our time in the insane asylum. The fear of us returning that almost acts as a mental shield against our own unraveling. We have overcome these horrors before, and we can do it again. But we didn't. The first scene of the game is a man kicking out the chair in his padded cell and hanging himself. On the floor are bloody scriptures and a corrupted journal. The story we play through is his. The last recollections of a broken mind trying to make sense of it all. I now walk in the shadows between worlds, and it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth.